Hello and good morning from Caddis Island County Park and the Cooper Environmental Center. My name is Megan Zorns and I am a senior park naturalist here at the Nature Center. Um, so we had our first live episode this past Friday with Nikki and our really adorable box turtle Itchy. Um, and today is our second episode with our beautiful corn snake, Miss Luna. So we're gonna be talking about corn snakes today. And we're also gonna be talking about um, different characteristics of snakes as, as a whole. Um, so corn snakes are actually endangered in the state of New Jersey. So endangered means that there, there aren't as many of them in the wild as there, as there should be for a healthy population and a healthy ecosystem. And there's a couple of reasons that they're endangered in the state. One of them being is that there's habitat loss, especially in New Jersey because of how densely populated we are. So um, there's lots of development, lots of habitat fragmentation, which means that habitat's being broken up by building um, homes and roadways and things like that. So they're running out of places to live. Another reason, believe it or not, is the illegal pet trade. So Luna here, you can see she's got those beautiful colors and those colors help her to blend in or camouflage with her surroundings. So she can hide from predators like hawks and foxes and so she can sneak up on her prey. So these colors are very highly prized in the pet trade. And in the, if you maybe, let's say go to a pet store like PetSmart or Petco, you might very well see a corn snake for sale, but those corn snakes will be a different color. So they might be albino, which means that they're very white or light in color. And those ones are captive bred and they are, they are legal for sale at pet stores. So you don't wanna be taking wild snakes out of their habitat. Um, so Luna here, she's, she's a little bit shy. So she's a little bit squirmy today, um, but she is very sweet. I know snakes um, have kind of get a bad reputation. Um, they're, they're feared by a lot of people and they're misunderstood. But since I was a little girl, snakes have always been one of my absolute favorite creatures on planet Earth. I think they're so beautiful and they're really interesting, different um, you know, behaviors, and they come in so many different colors and patterns, and they're really important to our environment. Um, so they are actually smooth and dry. So a lot of people think snakes are slimy and wet, um, but actually they're, they're kind of they're kind of smooth. So if you see her belly scales right here, just be a little wiggly for me today. They have thick protective scales that cover their bodies like most reptiles do. And you can see they kind of overlap much like shingles on a roof. So I can comfortably give her a little pet on the belly here. If I go from head to tail, it's smooth. But if I go up the other way, my finger will actually catch on those scales. And those scales allow her to grip things like trees and rocks. So she's able to, to climb, she's able to slither around effortlessly. So they look like they're gliding across the, across the forest floor. And they can even swim as well. So snakes, snakes actually can, can swim quite well. Um, and those belly scales here, you can see that pattern that she's got, that checkerboard pattern. That's part of how corn snakes got their name. So that pattern there kind of looks like the, the kernels on an ear of corn. Another reason they might have been named corn snakes is because of where they're found. They're often found in agricultural areas um, like grain stores and they're not actually eating the corn, but what they are eating are the rodents, the rats and mice that are hanging out around those grain stores. So snakes, corn snakes and all snakes are strictly carnivorous which means that they only eat meat or other animals for food. So in the wild, a corn snake might eat things like um, mice and rats, little voles, small lizards, amphibians like frogs and toads. They might even eat small birds and bird eggs. At the nature center here, we feed all of our snakes a diet of frozen mice. Now, of course, we do thaw them out first, um, and there's a reason that we feed them dead mice versus live in captivity. Most snakes in captivity can learn to accept um, dead mice versus live. And it's much safer for them to, to eat an already dead mouse versus a live one. Um, and that is because the live mice can actually fight back 
if we try to feed a live mouse to our snake Luna here, they have very sharp teeth. If anyone has ever had a pet gerbil or a hamster and they nip on you, you know that is actually very painful. So we don't want our snakes getting injured and it's just more humane all around for, for our snakes. Um, so when we feed our, our snakes, we might wiggle the mouse a bit just to entice them to eat and it stimulates their natural behavior. It's actually good for their mentality and good for their health if they can feel like they're doing something they would naturally in the wild. So Luna, despite how uh, calm she seems right now, she is actually a very aggressive eater. On feeding day, which is every, every other Friday, so they only eat once every two weeks because their metabolism is very slow as a reptile. She is um, very excited when she smells food in the air and we'll wiggle that mouse for her and she's going to strike at it very, very quickly. Now, I have been bitten by a snake before a few times and you know what? It's not as bad as you might think. So snakes have lots of little itty bitty sharp teeth and those teeth are curved inward to help grip their food. So when she bites, she's gonna latch on and then she's going to coil around her prey. So she's a constrictor. Snakes have two ways of obtaining, of obtaining their food. They're either constrictors, which are non-venomous snakes like our corn snake here, or they can have venom. Now I'd like to point out the difference between venomous and poisonous because a lot of times kids will ask, oh, is that snake poisonous? Well, not quite. So a venomous animal like a snake um, a spider or even a wasp or a bee. Um, venomous animals have to inject their toxins. Poisonous animals, on the other hand, like maybe a poisonous mushroom or a poison dart frog, those toxins need to be ingested. So that's the difference there. So when I'm talking about snakes, we refer to them as venomous. So she's going to constrict her mouse and that is a process called asphyxiation. It's a big word and all that means is she squeezes that mouse tighter and tighter. Every time that mouse exhales, she's going to constrict it just a little bit more so that it can't take in any more air. And when that's all done, she's going to actually unhinge her jaw. So our jaw is attached top and bottom. So we can only open our mouth so wide. You may have seen videos of snakes swallowing something as large as a bird's eggs and their mouths stretch out really, really wide. So they will unhook that top and bottom jaw and that allows them to swallow something much larger than their own head. We try to keep the mice to a reasonable size for these guys just for safety reasons, but if they needed to eat something much larger than their head, they absolutely could do that. So I have a, an actual rattlesnake head right here in a jar. There we go. It's a little weird, it's a little creepy looking, but this will give you a good look at snake teeth on a venomous snake. So like I said, Luna has lots of little sharp teeth and rattlesnakes and other venomous snakes have that as well. But in addition to those sharp teeth, they have these two large fangs. Most venomous snakes are front fanged, like this timber rattlesnake right here, and they are native to New Jersey. Um, some snakes are also rear fangs, so they'll have them farther back in their head. So they have these two fangs in front and they are hollow. So those fangs will inject the venom and they are connected to venom glands on either side of their head. So when you see a venomous snake, it is very likely that they will have a more triangular shape to their head and that's because those venom glands are protruding out on either side. And there's, there's different types of venom, um, of venom that they can inject. Um, some types of venom will um, have a neurotoxin, which means that it affects the nervous system of the animal. So the venom does all the work for the snake. They don't have to constrict and use their strength and muscles. Instead, they're going to rely on that, that toxin to do the work for them. So it might paralyze the animal, some types of venom, will start to digest the animal before, animal before the snake even gets its mouth around it. Um, so it, it just kind of makes life easier for the snake. Um, so there are two species of venomous snakes in New Jersey. Like I said, this, this timber rattlesnake right here. We also have the Northern Copperhead and you can find those a little farther north in the state of New Jersey. Now I'm not telling you all of this to scare you guys or make you fear snakes even more. My, my hope is that you will have a healthy respect and appreciation for these guys. And now Luna is just loving the camera here. Hello, 
she's flicking her tongue, smelling that camera. So they do smell with their tongues. Their senses are a little different <laughs> than, than our human senses. So as I was saying, they don't, they don't wanna come after people. There's no reason to fear snakes. They're very important for our ecosystem. They're, they're a predator that help keep um, animals like rodents and help keep their population in balance because rodents in large numbers can carry diseases and we don't want that. So you might see one slithering around on your walk. I hope you guys are able to get outside when the weather is nice, keeping social distancing in mind. Um, but I've come across snakes only a handful of times and I've spent a lot of time outdoors and in the woods. And the reason being is snakes sense vibrations. So she's going to feel the vibrations of my footsteps. And if she can feel those vibrations, she knows that I must be really big and she doesn't wanna to have to deal with me. So they're going to run away or slither away before you even get a chance to see them most of the time. The only time that you're gonna to have to worry about coming into a confrontation with a snake is if you purposefully corner it or try to handle it. Otherwise, they want nothing to do with you. Um, so yeah, she's just, she's just gonna come say hi. And she's got that, that tongue so she can sneak out her food and its fork. So it kind of captures the air molecules at the end, which is how we would smell things. And they also don't have any ears. So that, that good sense of vibration that they have kind of takes the place of their sense of hearing. And right now, um, spring is starting to, to come around the corner. Um, and during the winter time, snakes will brumate. It's kind of the reptilian form of hibernation. So they will seek out dens that made by an animal like a fox because they can't dig them out themselves. They don't have any hands or claws. So they'll find a den made by another animal and they will actually congregate there together. So there might be multiple corn snakes in that den. There might even be snakes of other species living together to, to kind of huddle up for the winter time. And then in the spring, they're going to emerge and that is when they will start to lay their eggs. So corn snakes will lay a clutch of anywhere between 10 to 30 eggs and they're actually leathery and squishy. So depending on the species, depending on the reptile, um, those eggs might either be hard shelled or more soft shelled. And then when those snakes hatch out, they have something called an egg tooth. So that little, this little sharp piece on the end of their nose will help them break through that shell. And then when they hatch, they are out and ready to survive, you know, the great big world. They don't receive any care from their parents um, and they have all the instincts they need to survive. The same thing goes for venomous snakes. They have just as much toxins in their venom as babies, as do their, their parents. Um, so if you see one of these snakes slithering around, hopefully you will get a chance to take a good look at it, appreciate it, um, and then just let it go on its way. Um, let's see, do we have any, any questions? Got any good questions coming up from people? You answered the one about are they venomous? Are, they, are, are corn snakes venomous was the question? Corn snakes are not venomous. Um, I would not be this calm, cool, and collected if she wasn't. Um, we don't keep any venomous snakes here at the Nature Center. Um, you do need special permits for that. Um, so all of the snakes that we keep here at the Cooper Environmental Center are native species that you can find in Ocean County. So a corn snake, although endangered, um, you might come across one in an open field. Like I said, they look for open um, agricultural areas. They might even seek out abandoned buildings, um, but they do prefer open areas more, more so than forested areas. And I see we have a question whether Luna is male or female, and she is a female. And the, we only know that because we take them to a vet whenever we acquire a new critter at the park. We take them for an exam just to make sure all is, is good and healthy with them. And they actually have to determine the sex of the snake because Unlike the box turtle, if you caught that, that talk with Miss Nikki on Friday, you can tell a box turtle's um, if it's a boy or a girl based on their eye color. Snakes, we can't do that. We have to have a vet check that for us. Um, how often do snakes shed? That's a good question as well. So depending on the age of the snake, the younger the snake, the more often they will shed their skin. So they shed as they grow. And because their, their skin is so thick and scaly, they kind of shed it in one big piece. 
granted that the humidity humidity is right and and the temperature so they will start off by rubbing their nose on a rock or something rough like a tree branch and that skin will peel inside out kind of like you taking off your sock and then underneath will be a bright shiny new set of scales so we're constantly shedding our skin as well but we do it in an in individual cell so when you wash your hands or maybe scratch an itch we're shedding our skin as well but it doesn't come off in one big piece like with with snakes here um what do we see when when do they swim when they swim how do they breathe oh how do they breathe so they really don't swim underwater maybe i should have clarified that but they kind of just swim on the surface of the water there are snakes um, called their sea snakes that will dive and actually live most of their life in the ocean and they do have lungs um, just like we do so they have to hold their breath if they dive underwater and another interesting thing about their lungs because they are so streamlined they kind of have to have all their organs squished together so they've got one functioning lung which is usually their right lung and the other lung usually is really really small and doesn't do too much as, as far as oxygen exchange goes um she's just starting to get comfortable with you guys now and you'll notice too that she hasn't blinked once at you guys so you'd always lose a staring contest with a snake she does not have any eyelids and when she sheds her skin she'll get a new set of contact lenses i like to call them so they do have a protective clear lens over their eyes but they can't close them like we do and they sleep with their eyes open Good. all right so um join us again on friday we're going to be um, hosting another episode with a diamondback terrapin and any other questions that you guys have just leave them in the comments section and i will get to them this afternoon so take care and stay safe, guys. Thanks for joining in.